just wanted to see what the ambient noise is like. I have a feeling it's pretty bad because I can hear a lot of stuff, house stuff rattling around back there. Um, but, you know, in my van, I had a whole lot of trouble with road noise. And right now I'm not going very fast, so I can't really tell what the road noise is like. But it's been a time since I've gotten any videos out. Um, and I was working so hard on it and doing a pretty decent job of getting videos out regularly. And then I got sick. I knew it was time to get another rig, so I spent time shopping for a rig, then I got the rig moving. I mean, just, just all the little things that have been happening in the past, I don't know, two or three months, gosh, I don't even know how long it's been, uh, I, I just haven't had the, I haven't been in the mindset to be creative to do the editing of my videos. And when you have a lot of deal things to deal with, a lot of stress and stuff like that, some things go on the back burner and editing videos with the back burner. And so I'm hoping to get back to that soon and start putting content out there for you to enjoy again. Uh, we'll get there and just be patient with me in the meantime. fall colors that I've seen this year. I thought I would tell you some of the things that went into my decision making for 
getting something different than the my my lovely road track. Oh my gosh, that road track! It was a '97 Versatile road track, Versatile uh, 190. It served me so well for four years. It got me into some of the craziest places, which for me has been such a big part of this life. Um, I've, I've loved going to, to the mountaintops, to the valleys, over the, you know, rocky, rocky, dusty, dirty, bumpy roads. Um, one of my favorites was the, um, let me think, Moki Dugway Drive. This is in like southern Utah. So I drove up the Moki Dugway. I can't do that in this rig. Not up the Moki Dugway because it is, it's like a steep grade, massive hairpin turns with small gravel. Um, this rig, I don't believe, would make the hairpin turns. I, I think the rest of it, it would do okay with. Um, if it wasn't for the hairpin turns. And then at the top of the Moki Dugway is Muley Point, which so fabulous. I, I just love that. So, you know, if you want to check that stuff out, go find that those videos in that time frame. One of them should be, I think one of them was maybe the scariest drive or something like that. Um, so things like that. I'm not going to be doing in this rig. Um, so that was one of the things that was a con to buying a new rig. Thankfully, I got to do that stuff for four years and I did. Oh my gosh, I would just look over here and think, oh, I want to go tr see what's down that road. And I would get into some of the craziest situations. I would go down roads that would say four by four only, which my van was not four by four. Um, I didn't have any special lift. But I did have decent clearance, and I was pretty familiar with, with my rig's clearance, and so most of the time <laughs> that did not provide the problem. Um, I also had really good tires, um, so I was able to do those things without really hardly any consequence. I got some, what, what some of us call Arizona pinstriping, it could be Utah pinstriping, wherever you are, sometimes you scrape up against the things. So yeah, I, I got myself into some of the craziest situations. Even my first time going to Arizona, I wasn't full time yet, and I decided to check out this place, the Boondock, and it was up, you were driving up this really steep wash, basically, beside some power lines, and this wash had big rocks, jagged rocks, and big, uh, like, divots where rain water had washed through and stuff. Oh my gosh, it was another one of those crazy situations that I got myself into. And whenever I got to a place where I thought I could camp for the night, just park it for the night, I did, because I, I was like, it was getting close to dark, and I had already taken the chance of going up this road, so I just stayed there for the night. And luckily, you know, I didn't have any punctured tires, nothing like that, got back down it safely the next day and continued on my way. So I did learn early on kind of what my van was capable of. And one of the things when you're in situations like that, you have to really pick where you land your tires, um, both for the clearance purposes and for the purposes of not puncturing, puncturing tires. So, um, yeah, that was, that was quite interesting. Okay, so back to my decision to get a new to me rig. Some of the main reasons for it is um, due to my body conditions and things like that, I was just needing to get something that had a little bit more space. One of the things in the van is that it was always Tetris. You, if you want this, you had to move that, that, and the other thing to get to what you're wanting and then move it all back, um, including Jazzy. Uh, she still uses a crate and I was having to move her crate back and forth every single time we moved. It did not matter, it always had to be moved several times when we decided it was time to get on the road. Um, and then, you know, everything else. And the space had just gotten a lot smaller with having a dog. 
I know for some people that's not a problem, for me it was, but then there were also many other things. Um, my van, even though it had the high top so you could stand up in it, I could stand up perfectly fine in it. However, um, the ceiling was right, right at my hair level. So basically, even though it had an indoor shower, I couldn't use it. Um, I, due to my back and other difficulties with joints and stuff, I couldn't squat down to, to take the shower to try to get my hair washed. I couldn't really bend over. Um, so it just didn't work. So what I did pretty much for the whole four years was I took showers outside. I would put a tarp around my barn doors plus I put an extension on my shower hose and I would take a private shower outdoors and it worked really great. I love outdoor showers. Most of the time people didn't really know what I was doing. They thought maybe I was just putting that up for privacy and airflow or whatever. Um, and I loved it. However, I, you know, I stay in usually about the 60 to 75 degree range. And a lot of times it's closer to the 60. Um, when I first started, I was okay with that. It didn't make me too chilly to take my shower outdoors or whatever. But I remember last year it became more of an issue. Uh, and then even through the year, uh, I, you know, um, generally summertime is warmer, but I was still a lot of times in places where sometimes I couldn't get, it wouldn't be warm enough during the day or it was too windy or, you know, whatever that it really chilled me to take a shower. Okay. So another thing with, um, being more sensitive to the cold now is that all that time I'm not run a heater at night. It doesn't matter how cold it gets. And I, sometimes it got down into the 20, like low 20s outside, which typically, if it was in the low 20s, I was lucky to be 30 degrees inside. Um, however, if it was like 45, then I was usually about 55 degrees inside. Um, so, although I still don't mind sleeping in cold temperatures like that, because I have blankets, and uh, as long as I go to bed when my feet are still warm, I'm golden. I mean, I'm fine. Um, but my van did have a furnace. However, part of the storage system for me was under the bed and that's where the furnace was. And so in order for me to have used the furnace, I would have had to find a place to put that stuff that was under the bed. There was no place. Um, so I just didn't run the furnace and that even wouldn't matter because I'm fine with kind of staying cuddled up in bed and, and doing things, you know, like say on my tablet while I'm in bed or, you know, watching TV or playing a game or doing Facebook, you know, whatever, or reading a book. I, I, I stay in bed till it warms up a little bit, but I have Jazzy now. She doesn't like to stay in bed very late. <laughs> so it didn't matter what the temperature was. If she was right, if she's ready to get up, she's ready to get up. So again, the cold, it was a factor all the way around. Yeah. And, and it was just making it so much more uncomfortable. Also, in that small space, um, Jazzy is either on a leash or on a lead line hooked to my rig at all times, or at least almost at all times. And with that particular space, she was tripping me up because she, she will go around me. She doesn't do it as bad now in this rig. And this rig is a little better set up for it all. But she will go around me with her lead line and get me tripped up. Okay, that's doing way better in this rig. But in the van, it was like there seemed to be no way around it. She, whether I was going in and out, she was tripping me up, the doorway, the, the steps. Uh, which that's another thing, you know, I was having to bend down to get out my door and then get down my steps or up my steps. And again, with joint issues and stuff like that, it was just getting increasingly painful to use my van. So I knew that I wasn't ready to settle down 
and I knew that I still, I, I like to be in a new place every two weeks or less. Um, I, I just, I think I would get depressed if I tried to go back to the stationary life at this point in time. So, I either was going to continue to suffer and things get worse in my van, or it was time to get something that would more fit my current situation. So that's what I did. And I am loving it. I, I do know that there are still going to be times that I'm going to see that road that I want to try going down, but it'll look too too complicated for this particular rig. So I'm going to miss a little bit of adventure, um, but I'm going to stay able to continue with the adventure. And so the trade-off, absolutely 100% worth it. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I hope you guys are having lots of shalom, which one term for shalom is peace. So yeah, I, I wish for peace for everyone. Um, find it in the little places and the little things. Um, like one of the things I was talking about was outdoor showers. Oh my gosh, I would, I would just be in awe of taking an outdoor shower. I love outdoor showers. And speaking of that, I love showers, period. Um, anytime you get a full-fledged block of shower, like say at a friend's house or a motel or you know something like that, you're going, oh, because even if you get to take showers pretty frequently in a fairly nice RV, you have to do the Navy shower thing if you're boondocking, which is what I do. So I'm not hooked up to water. I'm not hooked up to electricity. I have to be very, very conservative with how I use my water, how I use my propane, um, because I can't be going into town and getting those things super frequently because that would get too expensive. That's why I boondock in the first place. So, yeah, I love my showers no matter which kind it is, whether it's a Navy shower where, you know, you just, you know, turn on the water long enough to get wet, then soap up, then rinse off, you know, turn the water back on to rinse off. Um, or if I get a full-fledged shower, I love them. Um, and, you know, that's, that's one of the stories of this nomadic lifestyle. One of the things you have to be prepared for is you don't get long, hot baths. You don't get long, hot showers. Unless, you know, unless you're doing it in such a way that you're at paid campgrounds with water hookups and, and all that. And that's fine. Some people, that's what they do. It's just not the life for me. So... Anyway, peace, love, shalom. Have a great day, and I love you all. I'm about to sneeze. Hey, two. <laughs> um, thanks again. Shalom. <laughs>